Hello and welcome back to Blackjack. My co-host Athena is currently being a naughty little bird, so she's sitting in her travel cage right now. Uh, now, I tried doing several sound checks on this, and every single time I keep getting that weird hum. Again, I don't know what it... I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. I do have this. I don't know if I need to fiddle with the back of it or what, but uh, anyway, they also tried to convince us on the part that I skipped, as you can see, I'm 38 seconds in, that getting a genetic test from 23andMe is the perfect gift for Valentine's Day, and I don't know what the heck they're on about. Huh. <sighs> People, right? <laughs> now, my niece is in the next room. In fact, she's toddling up to the baby gate right now and watching me, so, um... I'm going to try my best not to curse this entire video. Now, she can't hear this, which is probably good. Although, if my sister gets on my case for anything, I'll just remind her she was watching The Punisher earlier. <laughs> Alright, so, let's just get started. I mean, I guess all I really have to say is, SON OF A SUBMARINER! And, you know, let's... Let's just let that hang in the air for a little bit. All right. You know the phrase, there's plenty of fish in the sea? Yes. Yeah, real obvious, but it turns out there's a bunch of superheroes down there, too. I don't think you understand what that phrase means. Like Aquaman, the king of Atlantis. And uh -huh. Namor, the first mutant and also king of Atlantis. Yeah. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job <laughs> to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Yay! It's funny, usually when he says that, they show a short clip from it. Uh, I, I know one thing um, from the character introductions that they've done the last few weeks. This is definitely going to involve outside help. I don't get mermaids. I mean... They're kind of hot, but they're fish people. And then when you meet them, all they want to do is try to kill you. I guess yeah. Tom Curry got to be one of the lucky ones, if you know what I mean. <laughs> After a chance meeting, Tom was left to father Arthur, the son of a mysterious woman of the sea. Mysterious. Oh, she thinks she was knocked up by a fish Jesus wizard? I, I'm going to have to move that a little bit. Yeah, you know, it, it, even though it says, uh, even there it says that uh, she, he thinks that she's lying, so, yeah. Before and after him, a procession of mostly scoundrels and villains. There we go. <laughs> Comics are weird. Regardless, Arthur learned to hone his aquatic powers from a very young age. When Arthur was just two years old, poor Tom thought he had drowned when he was actually just playing with some fish. <laughs> yeah, that sounds while good. While breathing underwater. Tom trained Arthur to master his powers until eventually his mother showed up with a heavy dose did. of fruit. Arthur was the rightful king of the underwater city, Atlantis. Nice, now, nice. I wish there were more stories about parents coming back <laughs> in real life. And so, Arthur would descend the ocean depths to claim his birthright and maintain the peace between land and sea as the king, the superhero, Aquaman. Yay! Oh, are you one of the people who thinks that Aquaman is lame? Well, think again! He's super strong, super fast, and can chill deep underwater for as long as he wants. And no, he doesn't just talk to fish. He dominates their brains and forces nice. them to bend to his will. Only if he has to. He prefers to telepathically communicate with them, and most sea life respects him enough to come to his aid. Huh. Except for piranhas, apparently, which ate off his freaking hand. I know you're a hardcore badass, but make those fish bow to your it's king like pizza, together. Not to worry. After a few gaudy hooks and a magic water hand, he got better. Arthur controls sea life by tapping into a worldwide phenomenon nice. called the clear. Kinda Sounds like good. From Star Wars, but just in the ocean. Hmm. Poison ivy and swamp thing connect to plant life with the green. That's that's pretty cool. I've never heard that before. Through the clear, creatures he controls increase in strength. Some even become capable of breaking. Hold on, though. That means you can acquire that sort of link because poison ivy used to be a regular human, unless they've retconned her yet again. Um. 
Green Lantern constructs. Also, Arthur. Come on. His powers are not limited to just Aquamarine life. He telepathic. I doubt I'm recording. All sorts of animals. Okay. And can even tap into the human mind. Wait, that says high recording. Me he can mess with my brain too. Oh, Sounds good. Whiz, the shiny one. Well, he has difficulty dominating more intelligent life. His octopus Sounds friend good. Popo is one such example of a being he cannot forcibly control. What's so impressive about that little guy? Oh, oh yeah. Whoa. Got it. And for humans, okay, that seems to be what Aquaman can generally do is cause a headache or maybe a seizure. That doesn't make me feel much better. But while hmm. see, taps into your Aquaman has plenty of power good. on his own, he also draws from the mystical might of his most iconic weapon. The legendary Trident of Poseidon! And also the Trident of Neptune. Wait, isn't that the same gun? Aren't they the same thing? Well, kind of. They both can control water, summon storms, create force fields, and unleash lightning. That one can teleport. Awesome. It's a bowling ball back here. Yay! I love they just have the, that line around. Aquaman's trident was a perfect symbol to prove himself a mighty king. Literally, he's strong enough to push around oceanic plates, throw a submarine around with water magic, and nice. lift this giant cruise ship. This ship appears big enough to compare to the world's largest cruise liner, the Symphony of the Seas, which weighs an incredible 228,000 tons. But oh, hang on, how do they know that? Because it didn't look like it was compared to anything. 228,000 tons. That sounds awesome. To keep up with Wonder Woman and swim around the whole planet in just an afternoon. Devolve the shark? Okay. okay. Hmm. Commanded plank to do the man's brain. Okay. And he even fought the ancient dead king of Atlantis, Atlan. This guy was so strong, he sank Atlantis centuries ago with one blow from his scepter, and Aquaman held back a repeat of the same attack with his bare hands. While there's nice, no official nice. size for DC's Atlantis, it is officially considered a continent. Therefore, it has to have a greater landmass than Greenland, the largest island in the world. This means Atlantis must consist of more than 836,000 square miles. No, it just has to have its own continental plate. Isn't that how that isn't that how that works? Isn't that what differentiates Greenland from Australia? And also Atlantis is usually just shown as one city. To sink or destroy it, Atlan must have been outputting potential energy averaging more than 155 trillion tons of TNT. Ooh. Anyway, everyone's always making fun of Aquaman, but he's pretty badass. Well, he does have one rather lame weakness. He's essentially fueled by water. If he's away from water for too long, he'll <coughs> dry out, what a feeling. lose his powers, and eventually die. He lives under the sea, he wears yellow, and he's absorbent? Wiz, I figured it out! Oh! No! He's not SpongeBob. Moving on. He can hydrate himself with blood! God damn, that's hardcore! Even with his flaws, Aquaman is always pushing so forward to any liquid? People. He may seem strange or and just silly, but he truly is time. a worthy king of Atlantis. Tell the surface dwellers to respect the sovereignty of my seas. Or we'll return and finish what we've started. We all know this story. A wayward sailor meets a mermaid princess, and they fall in love. Except this time, the fish people got it's to be princess. Princess. You know, it's and never a queen or a duchess. Of Atlantis. So. Her dad was pretty pissed. But he got even more pissed when he found out that uh, Daddy's girl had already been knocked up and popped out a brand new kind of superhero. <laughs> Namor, the Submariner. Sounds good to me. Unlike the strangely similar aquatic superhero DC would create two years later, Namor would grow up among his fellow Nick Atlanteans from the start. As the prince of the ocean, I wouldn't have even thought he had a surname. Along with surname. a sizable distrust of humankind. 
Yeah, I'd have a problem okay, that outfit is getting pretty good, really man. Nazis. As the rightful heir to the throne, it was Namor's duty to protect Atlantis. And with his mixed heritage, he had plenty of unique oh, abilities to do so. He's got superhuman strength, he's also got speed, and durability. He can store water in his body and shoot it out of his pores like a human sprinkler. Which is gross. Far more... Okay, well, I think something... I think that's going to come in handy with... Water. It's just going to be Possibly, he can telepathically communicate with all types of marine life, including other Atlanteans, and can persuade them to follow his cool. commands. Whether it be a squadron of armored sharks or a giant killer whale, the creatures of the sea follow the first mutant's lead. Did you say mutant? Yes. Technically, Namor is a three-way hybrid of human, Atlantean, and mutant genes. Unlike other Atlanteans... Hold on. So... Why is he called the first if he's only the first as far as when they put him out in the comics, as opposed to the first in within the comics universe? That doesn't make any sense. Is the mutant power of flight? Oh, is that why he's getting those tiny little wings on his feet? I always thought those were like little rudders. Nope, he flies with them. Well, I've seen them before, and I always thought he just had like, you know, I thought there was something he wore. Hmm. And able to electrolocate to never also be mimic the abilities of marine life, sensing lateral lines like fish or absorbing and discharging shocks like an electric eel. And for even more power, he wields his legendary trident. Alright, how many tridents does this guy have? Let me guess. Four? Just one. The trident of Neptune. But I Again. the other guy had a trident of Neptune. Oh! I think I just figured out why Aquaman had two different tridents. There you go. Well, this tridents <laughs> got a bunch of cool magic powers. It can control water, shoot lasers, turn people invisible. Lego and games, if Namor nice. needs some backup, he can animate objects and his surroundings to create living beings to fight alongside him. Interesting. And not even the only magic doohickey Namor has. He can use the horn of Proteus to summon sea monsters like Giganto, which is a super whale with arms. Look out, birds with arms, I'm starting a new subreddit. <laughs> the Giganto is strong enough okay. to stand the blast of an atomic bomb, and yet it still pales in comparison to Namor's own strength. No kidding, the Submariner is strong enough to make- Okay, question. Oh good, you guys are out of there. The reason that Athena is not joining me, and the reason she was staying in her travel cage, is because when I tried to get her out of it, she bit me. Multiple times. So she'd been in there for probably like an hour and a half since I got to their house, so... Now she's finally out, because she finally let someone pick her up. Anyway, okay, I paused this before I noticed that, because I was thinking, um... I don't know if I'm making this up or if this was in some sort of parody or something or if it's official that Aquaman can communicate with Cthulhu because I assume that Namor can do the same thing. It's the savage Incredible Hulk who's lived in 150 billion tons of rock for over a minute. If that's not good enough for you, how about the time Namor held up a whole freaking island all yeah. by himself? He's quick enough to catch the Human Torch, mm. absorb and discharge electricity powerful enough to injure Doctor Doom, took on ah. four Trident to Hammer, survived a mountain fall, oh. and even resisted the mind control powers of the Purple Man. See, Boomstick, in the grand scheme of things, little winged feet aren't so bad when you could have been called Purple Man. All right, Namor is pretty awesome for an elf. Who is speedo. that though? Excuse I don't. Me? This is not a speedo, Jimmy. Okay, these are my panties from Atlantis. <laughs> too bad he gets a bit. Uh, unstable if he's out of the water for too again, long. Yes. True, Namor's had a strange history of shifting personalities, sometimes even playing the part of villain. Apparently, his bout. Yeah. Some things must be seen on the ah, No one's capable of that. None of that. Get, go away. Go away. Go away. Why did they mix around the time? anger stem from a strange bipolar defect brought on by oxygen imbalance. Which, mm. last I checked, mm. isn't quite how bipolar disorder works. Well, yeah. No, Wiz, I have the same kind of problem. I get super evil and grumpy when I haven't had a beer in at least 24 hours. 24? Uh, 12. 6. 2. Screw you. 
Boomstick. That's a chemical dependence. Yeah. Uh, just like my personal hero, Bane. You're missing the point. Oh, you think the point is your ally, but you merely adopted the point. I was born in it, molded. How about that point? Yep. At the end of the day, as long as there is water <laughs> in his veins, the Avenging Son is a heroic king of his people and a terrifying... Wait, like literally in his veins? No, I am Namor, ruler of the kingdom of Atlantis. Your time in the sun is over. <laughs> all right, the commands are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, yeah. wonder if okay. Blue Apron has any fish on the menu this week. Yeah. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. Choose your meals each week, but right now, it's time for a death battle! Hmm. Well, Aquaman seems more durable, but I also notice they didn't... They... They didn't get into, um, a lot of, uh, Namor's, like, his lifting feet. Um, I don't know, being able to block a blow and being able to continuously lift something are different things. Um, and I notice what they do is that they'll withhold information of the winner so they can get into it later. Um, which makes me think that Namor would win, but I don't know. I mean, this is a new season. Maybe they're changing that up, or maybe they're just doing that to throw us off the case, or maybe they didn't think it was important, or anything. Um, <coughs> hmm. Aquaman being able to take over other people's minds is interesting, but Namor seems to be immune to that. So, or at least he resisted it from someone who I have never heard of, and thus have no idea how powerful they are. They didn't get into that at all. Oh, yeah. This is, uh... <laughs> this is still my best headphones. <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. Anyway, um... I don't know. I got no horse in this race. I got no seahorse in this race. Smaller here. <laughs> Why do you even need to have the pool? Why are either of you at the pool? Peasants, you dare splash the prince of blood? Plenty of space around the pool, Smart. <laughs> Okay then. A prince, but I am the king of the seven seas. The prince of Thing, yeah. I just don't know why it peaked in my mouth there for a second. It has to be the pettiest reason ever to fight. <laughs> oh yeah, creating stuff. Yeah, they both have enormous egos though. Oh, there's Roshi's house out there. So similar to that one big city that they used to have. You know, City of Glass, as I called it. They're, they're gonna go with the same beach for a lot of things. Kapow! He seems to be able to use that, yeah. <laughs> Dude, this cold is chest. That's just how things are. You should understand yours! You are such a terrific dumbass. 
Huh? You're talking to me? Dolphins are ferocious assholes, too, I gotta say. Okay, alright, I cursed. Whoops. Down in the depths! Deep sea fangly fish! Yes? I dig it. <laughs> They're just watching. They don't get any involved. Okay. Another trick? No! You control me! Impossible! How about a boys? Yeah. Okay, so I guess he wasn't able to. Dinner's on the king tonight. Alright, I guess he wasn't able to resist that. Oh, man, am I underwater, or am I just sweating so much from how intense that got? <laughs> Aquaman and Namor's powers were so similar and well-matched, this fight could have reasonably gone in either one's favor. In fact, neither had many powers that the other did not possess in some way. Like how yeah. Namor had his mutant wing feet, but Aquaman's magic trident could let him fly, too. Still, while Namor could certainly have won this in some circumstances, Aquaman had the potential he needed to take the victory more times than not. Oh, yeah. Namor could match Savage Hulk, who held up 150 billion tons. But remember, Aquaman stopped Atlan's continent-crushing attack, which had a potential energy over 150 trillion tons of That sounds tea. awesome. Not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison, but consider Namor's own similar feat, keeping the island Utopia from falling. We can estimate the island's size and weight using this panel, coming to a little over 178,000 tons. Considering the weight applied as force through the pillar Namor was- Imagine being the person who had to mark that and then blow that up and count all the pixels. Up. This means the potential energy exerted onto Namor would only be 1,425 tons of TNT. Yeah, only, yes. The energy Aquaman stopped was 109 billion times greater. Sure, Namor was fast enough to easily catch up to the Human Torch, who flies over 140 miles per hour on nice, a normal nice. day, and sometimes even thousands of times the speed of sound. But Sounds Aquaman good. has routinely kept pace with Wonder Woman, who has been frequently shown to move thousands yeah, of times the speed of light. Yeah, we covered that yeah, but none of that strength and speed would matter if the Submariner just ordered a bunch of sharks to eat him first, right? Namor could command sea life, sure, but Aquaman could directly dominate their minds and force them to act on his will. And while Namor can telepathically communicate with other Atlanteans, he could not create hemorrhages or seizures like Aquaman could. Though Namor could certainly resist these mental attacks, similar to how he survived the Purple Man, this is still solid Who evidence that Aquaman's that? telepathy was more powerful. Oh, and don't forget, Aqua King can make his underwater buddies physically stronger with the clear, while Namor was stuck commanding plain old everyday fish. Overall, <laughs> their extremely similar powers were so closely matched, Aquaman had the edge in just enough of them to prove himself the strongest. But you know, I did tell you, they had to rely Aquaman on outside help. Could see victory, but at least Namor tried it. The winner is Aquaman. <laughs> Okay then. Hey, thanks for watching the first episode of season six. If you want the battle yeah, music for yourself, six. click the link below. Want a new show to watch? Check out Genlock. It's crazy. It's got mechs, anime, awesome news, uh, Michael B. Jordan, and somehow I, I made it into voice character. Click the box. Okay. Okay, hang on. Okay, more Mega Man. Okay. All forms. Oh. Oh, that's gonna be neat. It is. <laughs> Dad goes, yes it is, without knowing what's going on. Doesn't matter, I know it's going to be neat. He said, doesn't matter, I know it's going to be neat. It's um, multiple iterations of a video game character are going to be fighting on the next death battle. Okay. Video game? Means, but... Oh, there's like, um, there's multiple versions of him throughout the games. Okay. And they're all going to be fighting each other. Oh. You know, like, how there's different versions of Spider-Man, depending on which universe you're in? Right. It's like that. Okay. Okay, now I have explained. Cool. <laughs> Interesting to have Spider-Man battle right now. Anyway, uh, like I was saying, no, I mean, on. I didn't really... 
I, I don't really know either well, of the characters. Too. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, yay! Dad, I, I, I do need to wrap this up. Okay. Okay, so anyway, um, like I said, I didn't really have much of a, a horse in this race, or a seahorse in this race. Uh, <laughs> Oh my, my, my. God, I don't know why my eyes been itching so badly. Okay. <sighs> Should have at least turned my head. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, they can mostly cancel each other out. I don't know anything about the Purple Man or his powers, so saying that he, you know, resisted a psychic control from the Purple Man means absolutely nothing to me. You know, it, it's like, I don't know, it's just, it, these names mean nothing. So what they need to do is they need to tell us who these people are. I mean, you know, they explained about the Human Torch and how fast he can fly. And they didn't bother to tell us anything about the Purple Man other than his name and that it's really ridiculous. And that he apparently tried to control Namor at one point. So it's it's they don't give us information that we should know, <laughs> and I mean I guess they did um, give us the information about uh, how much Hulk was holding up, but at the same time, you know, um, this looks like a giant earring, doesn't it? <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I mean it seemed to work out okay, you know, except for him. <laughs> and the fish that he summoned, but... Okay, just somebody tell me then. Can either of them summon Cthulhu? Because I don't know if that's something that actually happened or if that's something that happened in a joke or what. <laughs> uh. Anyway, though, next time sounds interesting. Uh, I've never played another man game, but, you know. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've played him in Smash Bros, and that's about it. Okay, uh -oh. I will see you guys next time. Bye!